for the it. most important thing that we can show our kids is not only how to love God, but that God is in fact loved by you as parents. They need to see you mm. love God in person. Mm-hmm. Now you got to say that. <laughs> nope. You said it so well. We will see you and talk about that on the other side. I botched that opening about <laughs> 10 times. So Ryan okay. just went ahead and said it, which was great. I think it's you okay. said it incredibly well. You know what? We're a team. We're a team. team and Frederick. if you haven't met us yet, I'm Selena Frederick. This is Ryan Frederick. Hello. We're all things fierce uh, families, but right now we're talking about fierce parenting. Yes. Parenting. 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 The, the most uh, difficult, rewarding thing I've ever done in my life. <laughs> but it's awesome. And yeah, we're very passionate about helping you, helping parents kind of see culture through a biblical lens and see our role as parents through a truly biblical lens. That's why this this particular conversation is so important because it's not just about here's what to tell your kids so right. that they will hear you say the true things. Yeah, no, you they can't. need to see yeah. it on display in your heart, in your and and by the way, <laughs> that is 10 times that. <laughs> 100 times more potent and you can't yeah, you can't fake what's going on in your heart and yeah. your kids see you at a heart and from a heart they're deep so perspective. good at that they're right so good because they're gonna see you in your most raw moments they're gonna see you without you know without well, your makeup on so to I, speak i think they see more than we can even comprehend about ourselves mm-hmm. like they have so much just ca- capacity to see for insight for yeah in- intuition, just straight yeah. into what's happening yeah. inside of our hearts and heads but yeah. Anyways, so we're going to talk about showing and telling the gospel to yes. our children and the necessity of specifically showing them uh, through what God is doing in your own heart. Mm-hmm. But first, this uh, ministry is completely supported by our listeners, our viewers. Yeah. You support in one of two ways. Either, you know, you uh, buy a book <laughs> on the marriage <laughs> side of things. Book, please, <laughs> buy all the books. No, no, that's that's the primary way. But then yes. the secondary way, which, is, which I'd say is almost more important, is our, our loyal kind of tight-knit community of patrons. Mm -hmm. If you want to become one of those few patrons, you can go. It's it's actually, uh, God has been so good. We have on the marriage side, almost 400 patrons and we're going to be merging the Patreons here in a few sec, in a few uh, weeks here. Point is, if you want to join that crowd of people, go to fierceparenting.com slash partner and we would love to meet you there. Uh, We do early releases. We have content that's available to you free of charge. We have other uh, various uh, perks and whatnot. Uh, You're welcome to take advantage of those. But before you take care of those, take take advantage of those perks. Make sure you pray. Yes, pray and ask the Lord to to lead you there. Um, So showing and telling. Yes. So the big question is this, is are we showing our children that God is good instead of just telling them. Now, we do need to proclaim well, the gospel to them. one way of telling them, I think, is showing them. Right. right. But, okay, yes. There's a quote that was making the rounds. It still yes. makes the rounds in some corners of the world. It's this idea that, you know, uh, preach the gospel at all times and only when necessary use words, right? If, yeah, if necessary use words. It, and and I think definitely have to use words. that quote is a bit, <laughs> it's a bit, I get the sentiment. It's like the, the sentiment is live it out. Yeah. But the thing is, is, the gospel needs to be proclaimed. It needs to be said. It needs to be communicated. So don't substitute showing your children the reality of God. Don't substitute proclaiming the gospel with just, I'm just going to show them, you know, and they'll pick it up. No, like you need to tell them Jesus is King. Jesus is Lord. Mm -hmm. Follow him, obey him, obey God's law, like love the Lord with your heart, soul, mind, and strength. You have to tell them those things, but also show them. So that's the big question is, are you, are we actually showing them? Right. Sometimes we can just fall in fall in line. Well, and that begs a deeper question yeah. too. Is there anything to show? Right. If you're sitting there like, oh man, I'm struggling with this. Oh. That's a big question. That's a yeah. big question. That's a big question. And behavior. So the thing is with behavior, our truest, most consistent behaviors always come out yeah. of our beliefs, of our truest, more most consistent beliefs. So and because of that. What our children learn mm-hmm. is more caught than it is taught. Right. Meaning that they, they're going to see what you do more than they're going to hear what you say. And they're going to want to do what you do more than they're going to want to do what you say. Right. Right. And so that's why we have to really get down to the heart of it. And so, uh, like we said early on, the most important thing is not just showing them right. that God is to be loved that, or how to love God, but really showing them that I actually love him. Right. Actually, and yeah. some questions I think to get us started around this conversation is, do our children witness us loving, adoring, worshiping, hmm. uh, serving, prioritizing, sacrificing for, and truly communing with God? And I, we were talking about this and I was like, man, I don't know that, 
I, I growing up as a kid, mm. I remember seeing my parents worship in church, right? That was mm. one sort of hook that I can remember. Uh, but throughout our day, like, do the kids see us worshiping? What does that even mm. mean? And so for me, I mean, like small things of talk of just having worship music on during the day because mm-hmm. it tremendously changes the tone of whatever is happening in their hearts and in our in our time. And I know I'm kind of jumping into like a how to real quick and I don't mean to, but I think that that is one way that I've witnessed mm-hmm. other moms uh, loving the Lord within the craziness of their day of having worship music playing all the time, whether mm-hmm. it's with words or just instrumental, but knowing, you know, the kids are learning these songs and they're starting to sing those songs on their own. And the thing, there's something about music and song that mm-hmm. can get to deeper parts of our, our soul. And so presenting it. that, laying that feast. Um, I love it. Yeah. Speaking of songs, let's read a Psalm, Psalm 34. Uh, we're not gonna read the whole thing, but starting in verse eight, uh, I want to read it out of my actual Bible here, not off the screen, because I love, this is a Bible, all right? This this is a Bible. <laughs> this is a book. I know. Screens are the... Screens are, it's the text, but it's not the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a hill I'm going to die on, but... We agree with uh, Cliff on that, uh, yep. <laughs> yeah, that's a friend of ours. So Psalm 34, verse 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Mm. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him have no lack the young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Mm. The first question here, okay, is why did the psalmist write, taste and see that the Lord is good? Okay, so we're going to look at this this passage exclusively and its progression and how it yeah. informs us as parents and how we can ourselves taste and then show to our children by way of us tasting and seeing the Lord is good ourselves. So why taste? I think, think of all the senses, taste is by far the most active, right? right. So you have hearing seeing smelling tasting touch yeah yeah five senses. yeah i think that's all five of them yeah but all of those are kind of passive like you kind of see things you don't have to actually make much of an investment in that thing you, you can, can still hide behind smell yeah. a thing it's a little bit more of an investment <laughs> <laughs> smelling uh, touching is is a little bit more of an investment uh but tasting like yeah. you're actually like making a commitment to something. i'm gonna put this thing in my mouth I'm going to I'm gonna like swish it around point. a little bit. <laughs> and I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, and then if you go to the next step and you actually ingest it, you swallow, yeah. that's a, that's a very big commitment. Like it, it could end in nourishing your body or it, can, it could end in you vomiting. It could end in you <laughs> dying. Yeah. Right. So, but why do you say taste and see that the Lord is good? Because there's something very unique, very personal, very one-to-one mm-hmm. when it comes to tasting. And so this passage saying taste and see the Lord is good. How do we show our children how do we allow them to taste for themselves Mm -hmm. and see that the lord is good instead of just saying hey you know if you had an amazing dinner just describing oh kids this dinner it was awesome the the food was just right (laughs) i followed it up with the dessert which was just right tasted great perfect you know flavor all that kind of stuff and they're just thinking yeah that's I can hear what you're saying. I, I, I totally hear you. That was a good meal. I'm okay. glad that you had, that was, that was a good time for you. <laughs> no, but, but what do you do if you have them there with you at the, at the dinner table? You say, daughter, son, taste this. Yeah. This is incredible. Taste it. You're going to love it. You, like, trust me with it. Trust me with putting this in your mouth so that you can <laughs> taste it. And if they're, you know, if we have an older daughter, our oldest daughter is pretty bold. Like she'll taste pretty much anything. Yeah. We've had her had, she's had oysters, like mm-hmm. fresh off the beach. She loved them. Point is, is like there's trust there, but Mm -hmm. we have to offer it. Right. And so how do we offer it to them is the big question. We have some suggestions for how to offer taste to them. What's the first one? Uh, one. Ask them to pray when you have family prayer time. Mm. Uh, I think just giving them the opportunities, uh, like our next one is ask them to read the Bible out loud. Uh, teach them to pray, mm. teach them to, uh, that they can do these things on their own without you, but you can do them together and, and sort mm. of discipling that into them. Uh, and we can pray also that our children would taste and see the, that the Lord is good, like experience for themselves the goodness. Mm. Obviously, we can't save them, right? There is God, the Holy Spirit is has to be at work in their soul. They can only respond out of their own heart. They can't piggyback their faith onto our faith as parents. Interesting. Um, Again, this tasting idea. <laughs> yeah, you ask them to taste it because you want them to experience how good it is. There's a difference between that and force feeding them. Yes. And saying you have to eat this entire thing right. or you're grounded. Right, right. <laughs> right. And what's that going to do? It's going to make them sick in different ways. It's going to make them resent the food. It's going to make them resent you. Right. So you have to lay before them this feast. And we say, taste and see that the Lord is good. Yeah, it's interesting. He put it 
he right. framed it in that type of conversation of an invitation mm. of taste and see. It's it. I don't know. I think it it sits on both sides of the fence of, of also like I'm going to encourage you, and I'm almost going to like throw this in your face because it's so good, right? And I'm not. <laughs> I'm, if I'm gonna, if I, if I, like you should. Oh, taste and see. It's not. If I uh, smash a pie in your face, you're going to get some pie in your mouth. <laughs> I mean, it's not trying to be super forceful. I think it, yeah. it, it, but I do think it kind of plays in that Interesting. because it's so good. You should taste and see this. I don't like. I couldn't understand you wanting to refuse this. So hmm, ways we can good. give our kids opportunities to taste and see the Lord as good as again by when we're praying as a family, asking them to pray, asking them to yeah. do the round robin when we're reading our Bibles. Hey, you're going to take a turn and read. You're going to read the next verse. It's, I, I, we're just hover here for too long, but think about like if you are actually enjoying something mm-hmm. like ice cream, right? And you're like, <laughs> oh, this is so good. It's so perfect. And what's the, a young kid is always going to say, can I have some? I want to try it. It looks awesome. <laughs> but if we're not savoring the word of God in a way that, oh, this is so, like you're not delighting in it. You're always just kind of begrudgingly reading it or you're only reading it, you know, at church or in times that are not normal life. Yeah. Church is normal life, but you get what I'm saying? Like if it's just like a, an event to read right. scripture, then they're not going to actually think that you enjoy it. Why would they want it? Or if you're yeah. shooing them away, I think I'm guilty of this as a mom. Yeah. Like, hey, I'm trying to read my Bible. Can you be quiet? <laughs> or can you go do something instead of inviting, Shut up, kids. I can't hear the Lord. <laughs> inviting them in. <laughs> inviting them in to sit on your lap. I've I found that to be the yeah. best way to actually keep them quiet too is to just say hey mom's reading her bible this morning come sit come sit with me Mm. and they'll sit with you and they'll they might ask a lot of questions but when they see that you're engaged with it either they'll be bored and run away because they're two and that's what they do uh or maybe they'll ask you about it and you can read with them so the progression right taste and see that the lord is good Mm -hmm. we're going to continue on down this passage blessed is the man who takes refuge in him uh verse nine oh fear the lord you his saints for those who fear him have no lack. So notice the progression here. If you taste and see the Lord is good, what is the next thing? Fear. Okay. <laughs> now, is he saying, uh, be afraid? Be afraid. Fear the Lord, all you saints. I think fear is part of it. Like yes. when you, Recognize when you and know. are standing at the edge of a cliff, yeah. like at the edge of the Grand Canyon, wow, it's magnificent. I fear it. <laughs> like yeah. I don't want to fall in the Grand Canyon. Yeah. I don't want to fall under the wrath of God yeah. because God is so big and powerful. Uh, that's part of it, but it's the natural result of seeing God as God, right. and you are not God, yes. right? And that's the fear that says, "I, I, I, I will revere your name. Right. I will call you God. You will. I will gladly relinquish the mm-hmm. throne. I will gladly cast my crowns before you, mm-hmm. so that you can take up the crown that only <laughs> you can rightfully wear. Right. You are king. I am not. So again, going back to this question, how can we inv- invite our children into uh, the fear? fearing of the Lord. I think the first we have to, we have to explain it to them. Right? right, right. I think teach them the the difference between fearing the Lord and being afraid of the Lord. Well, or just and being we afraid just, in general. And being yeah. afraid in general. I mean, just talking about fear. Uh, and that's something that requires us to understand hmm. the holiness of God, like you said. Um, ask them how they see God. Like, do you see God as big or small? Or what do you, what comes to your mind when you think about who God is? Uh, is sometimes they draw pictures. Ask them to draw a picture. I always think that's really entertaining to see well, what they come up with. And the goal there is to help complete the picture of yes, God. Yes, right? absolutely. Not let their picture of God be like, oh, this is great, Johnny. Right. Our, our fictional, <laughs> fictitious thing. I'm glad that you think God is, you know, a tree. Yeah. Like, no. You, you actually, you know what? God created that. And yeah. God's bigger than a tree. He's stronger than a tree. Yes. Taller than a tree. Right. And, and so, and we're talking about young kids. This I think is especially prevalent too for kids that are even in their teenage years because oh, yeah, and preteens. when you, th- cause they have They're all these searching. perceptions yeah. of God and you ask them, what, what, who do you think God is? Yeah. What do you think God is like? All the wiring is starting to connect in their brains and they're mm-hmm. starting to, uh, put up the, the scaffolding and everything's starting to sort mm-hmm. of start connecting, but it still is, they're still children, right? They're still looking for that direction and that purpose and that context and that understanding of who am I mm. in this? It's just that ripe time of yeah. those questions of who am I and what is this world and what are we doing here and where are we going? Yeah. And why are we here? And let them grapple with that, yeah. the difficulty of it. Mm-hmm. And then show them the second part of that verse, which is, oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. And, it's a, and it ends with those who fear him mm-hmm. have no lack. Mm-hmm. Now, that's a conversation starter. Yeah. What do you mean? What, what do you think this means yeah. that those who fear the Lord have no lack? Does it mean that you get everything you want? Right. Does it mean that nothing bad ever happens to you? You know, right. and these are relevant questions no matter what age your kid For is. For sure. But the point is you're showing them that God is, there's something that 
there's a completion that happens when mm-hmm. our fear is rightfully placed in the Lord that mm-hmm. we actually don't want for anything because yeah. he is our all in all and he has made himself available to us right. generously, lovingly as a savior. Yeah. And just remember that you can and you were designed by God to be that safe place for their questions, mm. uh, to be that safe place for those conversations. And so uh, the Lord, I mean, trust the Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. be in the word daily understand read commentaries like understand god's word so that when the times do come of those questions if you you can answer them as faithfully as you as you know and if you feel like you're always going to fall short we'll go together and search with your kid mm. let's find this together let's let's discover what god's word says together i mean it's what a actually, beautiful thing this it's perfect a uh, segue into verse 10 it says the you're young welcome. lions <laughs> the young lions suffer want and hunger but those who seek the lord lack no good thing so that line to me drives home this point that all young, whether they're lions or are, there are young, our mm-hmm. children, all the young they hunger, right? They hunger deeply, mm-hmm. namely for in the human case, not lions, but they, they hunger deeply for purpose, the context, and meaning. Yeah. They're asking those questions, and uh, without the fear of the Lord, we will suffer hunger yeah. and want. But it's only through tasting and seeing for ourselves that the Lord is good, that mm-hmm. he is our ultimate purpose and our ultimate goodness, that then we can be satisfied. I just love mm-hmm. it so much that they lack no good thing. Mm. There's a contrast purposefully being made. The young lions suffer hunger and want, but those who seek the Lord will lack no good thing. Mm. And so how do we show and tell this to our children? I think the first way is we include them in the celebrations of the blessings that we have received. Mm-hmm. Like every morning we, um, when we pray with our kids, there's always some variation of we're just thankful coming mm-hmm. out right we're thankful mm-hmm. for another day we're thankful for however god has provided for us be that some remnant of sleep the night before yeah <laughs> whether god you know we're, we're acknowledging god provided the food or we're healthy the sleep yeah. or the health or the house or you know the sunshine yeah. but it's bringing them into that now that again will change as our children age um i think another way that we do that is we we pray for them mm-hmm. and with them and we pray for them uh, when they're with us and they're uh, with an earshot of right, so of they hear us prayers. praying for them. Yes, I think that's important for yes. kids to know and hear and experience. Yeah, yeah, and then really tangibly, and this could be really profound or it can be cheesy. It really is going to depend on you, your delivery as a parent. But right. counting your blessings, like showing them clear examples of how God has provided for you, right, in a genuine way, and 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 crediting God as the giver of those good things. Right. Well, and I would, I think I would even extend that of see how this is a blessing how can we share this blessing how can we give this blessing mm. uh more life in in terms of you know giving it to others because blessings are not just about us but about the others around us not only do we not have lack but we are able to give overflow overflow into the hearts yeah. and lives of others well one exercise that came to mind as we were kind of writing this episode mm-hmm. is if you want to do this with your children take the age of your child and have them write yeah. down mm-hmm. or say that number of things that they're thankful for, whatever those blessings might be, yeah. right? So if they're so, five, yeah. say five different blessings yeah. or try to write it, it can be a writing exercise for sure. Yeah. I'm all and about that. That's up to you. <laughs> uh, obviously, if they're 18, like what are 18 things that you're thankful for? It's amazing how gratitude, thankfulness unto God will reorient the heart, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. It reorients your whole attitude toward things. So good. So um, that's our encouragement for you. Again, the passage for today was Psalm 34. Uh, verses 8, 9, and 10. Yes. Go through and read those. Here's our challenge Our challenge to you as a parent is go read those with your kids and talk through some of the things that we yeah. kind of brought up today. Read all of Psalm 34. It's just 22 verses. Yeah. Well read worth the whole time. thing. <laughs> um, and then ask them some of these questions that we've proposed here today. And, and hopefully uh, you'll begin to um, allow your kids uh, to taste for themselves mm-hmm. and see for themselves that the Lord is good for themselves. Right. Like, and again, I think this whole episode just begs that deeper question mm-hmm. of are you experiencing the goodness of God in your own heart? Do you know Jesus? Who is yeah. Jesus? Who is God? And why should I mm. take any time to know him and understand who he is? Which is a great segue into if you don't know Jesus, mm-hmm. if you're thinking, what is this all about? Um, there's actually a website, the news is good dot com. <laughs> It's a, it's a project that I set up a couple of years back, but it's basically just a pre- presentation of the gospel. Mm-hmm. What is this good news? It's a foregone conclusion. It's done. All we need to do is know it and and, mm-hmm. and hear it and give our lives over to Christ. Like mm-hmm. that's So if you don't know Jesus, we're here to tell you we've tasted, mm-hmm. we've seen, he is good. 
and you too can taste and see for yourself that the Lord is good. So go check that out, thenewsisgood.com, or just, you know, another good ministry, Ray Comfort, Living Waters. He has great presentations of the gospel. Um, you'll find uh, faithful people to, to tell or you Or talk gospel. to that Christian friend that yep. you know will be so happy to share who yeah. Jesus is. Yes, we are always that. so happy to share yeah. about God. Nothing better. Nothing better than knowing Jesus. Let's pray. Lord, thank you um, for the goodness of your grace, for the, mm-hmm. the, the good news that we are saved um, because you've loved us, that because of what you've done, not what we've done. Mm-hmm. Lord, thank you that you've allowed us to taste and see that you are good. I pray that you would uh, help us show our parents, or <laughs> excuse me, help us show our kids uh, how to taste and see for themselves that you are good so mm-hmm. that they might be transformed from the inside out and know you and, uh, and enjoy life mm-hmm. here on earth and forever into eternity with you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, If you enjoyed this content, we would appreciate it if you would like and subscribe this video on YouTube. If you're listening on the podcast, uh, make sure you leave a rating and a review. That would mean a ton to us. That helps get the podcast out. We we share these messages because Mm -hmm. we care about seeing parents (laughs) flourish uh, unto the glory of God. So with that said, this episode of Fierce Parenting is in the can. We'll see you again in about seven days. So until next time. Stay fierce.